Okay guys, we're getting to lesson number 100 and I wanted to have another opportunity where I'm going to be just playing games, explaining the moves, the ideas, especially now that we learned even more about the Pete's defense. And then in our next lesson, lesson number 99, we're going to go over something that we really need to learn now because once we get over lesson number 100, things are going to get a little bit more serious. So let's get to it. And as you read on the title for this lesson, I'm going to be playing against Maya. Now guys, those of you who are not familiar with this engine, Maya is supposed to be a human-like engine and this is really cool. Back in lesson number 96, I think, one of you, Ronaldo, suggested in the comments that I should play Maya and I didn't know what it was, so he told me how to get to it, then he gave me this very good idea which I really like guys because I have never liked to play against engines because they do engine moves. But this one, you could read more about it on Liches, but it's supposed to do the moves that humans would do. And that could be beneficial for you if you're training for tournaments and you want to play a specific opponent. Well, you could look into this different kind of engine and maybe it could help you better to prepare for your tournament. So anyways, I'm going to go here to Liches, like Ronaldo told me. So I'm going to put Maya, and then you're going to see Maya number one, Maya 5 and Maya 9. Now the only thing that is not exactly like he described it because he told me Maya 1 is going to be 1100 and that's what I read as well but for some reason I'm getting if I go here it says let me see if I click on it. So Maya is almost 1600 that's Maya 1. If I go to Maya 5 so Maya 5 well that one is going to be almost 1700 and if I go to Maya 9, well, that one is going to be almost uh, 1900. So it might depend on your personal rating. So maybe that's why uh, it's like this. I don't know. Maybe when I start, it's different. So what I wanted to do, guys, is play the three of them. And I think that's going to give us enough material to consolidate everything and get ready for when we go over lesson number 100. So let me go back here. So Maya... I'm going to go to Maya 1 and we're going to be playing like Ronaldo suggested. And by the way, maybe you're Ronaldo, the, the great soccer player, so who knows? <laughs> I'm going to go to Challenge and then Standard. Let me, uh, I think I have to change the time, otherwise I, I won't be able to play it. So let me just put, um, how do I do? Okay, let me just put 15, 10. And this is a, time control that I use with a lot of my students and maybe you guys like it as well. Now I'm going to start playing as the white pieces, then Maya 5 I'm going to play with the black pieces and then the last one as the white pieces again. For this one I'm going to try to implement what we learned in lesson number 58. So I'm going to start with d4 and I'm going to try to do the London system but with the ideas of castling opposite side and going straight for the king. If this engine is uh, human-like, it should get a little bit scared when we start attacking that king. So let me just put my pieces where we learned. So my bishop is going to d3, my pawn is going to c3, knight to d2. But let me just do c3 first. I just don't like this knight coming over to attack my bishop. So now, guys, this is very important. The bishop is attacking my bishop, so I have three main options. Number one, I could simply trade no big deal, and I get to move again afterwards. Number two, I could go back, hoping that if the bishop takes me, I open up the h file, and I'm going to be putting pressure on the h7 pawn, which could be even more powerful if they end up castling to the king side. So, oh, and the other one is just knight e5, and if the knight takes, I take with the pawn, is a fork. If the bishop takes, then the same thing, I gain more space, but I think I'm just going to go bishop g3. Let's say let's see if they take. Yeah, so Maya took, and now I'm going to take with the edge pawn. Again, generally we want to take from the edge towards the center, but here it makes even more sense because now our rook is looking down the edge file. So instead of bringing my rook to the open or semi-open file, I open the file for the rook. All right, so perfect. Bishop d3 is supposed to come anyways, but now even better because I'm aiming at that pawn along with the rook. So this should be a pretty easy attack on the king. Now I know that typically the queen goes to c2 and you know what let me do it anyway. So even more pressure 
on this diagonal. Then I'm left to do 92, and then I'm going to start attacking. Okay, so rook e8. I have to be careful, guys, because we know if you're being attacked on the flank, you should open the center. So maybe that's what Maya is trying to do. So let me just go knight b to d2. And let's see, maybe bishop d7, maybe e5. Yeah, e5. So we knew that was going to happen. Now I cannot let them do e4. That's going to be a very uncomfortable fork. So I need to take. They're going to take with a knight. And... After I take, that rook is going to land on e5. In that case, I'm going to improve my other knight at the expense of the rook. So that's me improving my pieces by winning a tempo. So there you go, knight f3. The rook should move again. Don't be surprised if the rook goes to h5. So let's see what they're going to do. No, rook back. Now I'm going to castle. And maybe I start doubling up my rooks on the h file. Maybe I could take advantage of the fact that my rook is on the same file as that of that queen. So let's see what my opponent is going to do. All right, so bishop g4. Now I really want to do rook h4, but I think rook h6 is more is better because I don't want them to be doing h5. So let me give it a try. See how it goes. I don't see any threats on, on mid right now, so they traded. And now I'm ready to double up my rooks. This knight, thanks to my doubled pawn, that knight cannot go anywhere. So you see, they're trying to do something on the queen side. And I'm bringing my pieces over. Now, I'm looking at a sacrifice on g6. I have to see if I'm ready for it, but it looks it looks like it. All right, so let me see. So bishop g6, I have to calculate this, guys. Feel free to do the same thing. Calculate as if this were your game. So bishop g6 h takes, um, rook takes, pawn takes, queen takes, king f8, rook h8, king e7, queen g7, king e6, hmm, and I don't think I have anything there. If king f8, can I do rook h7? No. So does that mean my sacrifice is not going to work? Well, it looks like it. Uh, king e7, king e6. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. What if I go rook h7, knight takes, bishop takes, queen takes. Huh, rook h7 might be the move. So candidate moves are bishop g6, rook h7, and why not even rook takes g6. So rook h7, knight takes, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes. Yeah, I think this is going to be the move, guys. So we just take. Oh, in between move. Let's see. Okay. So this is what we need to do, guys. Put pressure on our opponents, and they're going to collapse. Of course, this is my uh, 1500, almost 1600. Let me see. Yeah. Now, king of eight has to be the move, because if they go to h8, we just do checkmate, taking with the queen or with the rook. All right, so now I need to take here, and I'm threatening checkmate in one move. So the question is, what what could they do to prevent the checkmate? Okay, the rook is coming to the seventh rank. So let's see if we can take advantage of these. Uh, well, okay guys, so can you find checkmate in one move? If you can't, then we have to go back and do lots of one move checkmates. Right guys, so I think this is checkmate. And there you go. So we defeated Maya uh, almost 1600. So this is Maya one, but as you can see, it didn't play that well. Now, I wanted to do this on purpose because this is where you're going to get a lot. When you start moving up the ladder, you could defeat a lot of people by just doing these aggressive attacks. Castle opposite side, go after the king, and that's it. They will not know how to defend. As a matter of fact, many people get nervous and they just start pushing pawns. They don't know how to defend. When you have such an attack, your opponent, if they make a mistake, you win the game. If you make a mistake, you might lose the initiative, you might lose the attack, not a big deal. Now guys, as you move up the ladder, you're going to see it when I play Maya 9, I cannot use the same plans because they will know how to defend. So you could do this when you see that it doesn't work on your opponents because you're moving up the ladder. Well, then maybe play something more strategic, something a little bit less 
riskier. Okay, so let me go here to um, Maya 5. I'm going to do the same thing, challenge, and standard real time, 1510, and this time I'm going to be the black pieces. So you know, if they play e4, we're doing the pits, and knight f6. Let's see what line Maya is going to play. So this is again, guys, uh, almost 1700. Okay, classical, bishop g7, then a castle, look, bishop d3. And guys, look, you have seen me before when the bishop is on c4, I feel inclined to do c6 and b5, but here, let me just do bishop g4. Remember, this is now like a, like a boxing combination. I want to left, right, putting pressure on d4, and then when they defend, I'm going to strike the center. So you see, everything is pretty much forcing. I attack the, the queen. They have to take with the queen, or if they take with the pawn, they expose the king. Now, knight c6, not only a developing move, but I'm putting pressure on d4. Okay, they pushed. This is a move that almost no one does, because we should know this by now. If you have that perfect center, you only want to move the pawns if you're challenged by another pawn. Now, guys, a lot of you have been asking me, okay, I know, I understand the concept, but what if my opponent does it? I know it's a mistake. How do I take advantage of it? Well, immediately, we're going to be capitalizing on those weak dark squares. Also, pay attention to this bishop. This is going to be a very important piece. So, knight d4. You could go to e5 as well. Not a big deal. I just like it on d4. Now, the queen is going to move. Fine. And now, it's time for me to decide what I'm going to do next. I could do c5, I could do e5, I could do c6, I could do knight d7. I think I personally am going to break this uh, pawn structure. So is it gonna take? No, they didn't take. So I think I'm just going to go back. Guys, uh, in the king's in defense, in the pits, in all the openings, we always pay attention to these squares, and some people call it the dark square uh, strategy. And it means just placing your pieces on those dark squares in the center. So I'm going to go knight d7, opening up my bishop, and my knight could go ahead and occupy some of those dark squares. So let's see. Okay, they took. Now we take back. And I have to be careful with a possible discovery of my bishop, but I don't think they have anything just yet. Okay, so they move the, the knight. Now, if I take on b2, rook b1, and then they could go to b7, that's not what I want. I think, I think I'm just going to go back to safety. Not a big deal. I don't need the pawn. It could turn into a poison pawn. So let me just avoid it, and let's see what they're going to do. Okay, c3, not a big deal. Um, well, should I go knight c5, knight d5? Well, let me just take here. Okay, now guys, we're familiar with the queen getting out. I'm going to do it at this point. It makes sense to me. I don't know if it's the best move or not, but it simply makes sense. And that's the cool thing about this opening. It's very flexible. I'm already in the middle game. Just play chess. Okay, b4. It makes me move the queen again, but notice how this pawn is weak now. And my bishop continues to be very powerful on that diagonal. Now, this is a free pawn. It's hanging. So I think I'm going to take it. There's no check with the bishop. They could win a tempo on my queen again, but I think I'm already developed. I'm not in trouble here. So let's see. Maybe I don't think c4. Yeah, not a 4. So I knew they were going to win a tempo on my queen. So what if I just move now to g5? So I know that I have to move my queen, but I want my queen to go somewhere where maybe I could win a tempo. If I go to g5, I'm attacking the knight. And the bishop is attacking this pawn. So I'm guessing they're going to go back to e2. Protecting the knight. And of course the knight is going to be taking care of this pawn. So let's see what they're going to do. Nope, queen f2. Now still, I do not want to get that pawn yet. Maybe I could do knight e5. This is a candidate move. I'm doing a fork. I'm already winning by a pawn. Probably a second pawn. So simplification makes sense to me. So... Let me see. Yeah, knight e5. The queen cannot even go ahead and take on b7 because the knight will be hanging. 
So the queen better sticks around and let's see. Okay guys, so I think that if I go knight d3, they cannot take with the queen because we collect the knight. They have to take with the knight. That gives me the opportunity to trade queens and I get another pawn. So let me go for it. Just like you saw me doing in the other games with the other robots, I'm happy if I'm ahead, I'm happy to walk into an easy end game. So they take, they take, and then bishop takes pawn. This should be a very easy end game. Now, like we learned in lesson, I want to say 74 maybe, even in even if the uh, pawn structure or the, the material was even, bishop versus knight in this specific position, I think the bishop is superior, especially now that I have this diagonal. So I'm attacking the rook. Probably the rook comes over. No, not there. If the rook goes to c1, trying to get to the seventh rank, well, I have a fork and I get another pawn. So this should be, again, a pretty easy end game to win. I'm not going to lie. I don't like that rook on the seventh rank, but I mean, I'm going to be winning by two pawns. The question now is what am I going to do next? And by the way, now notice how these are connected or, or, or protected past pawns. So these are going to be past pawns that should be able to win the game. Okay, so king h1, the question now is what do I do about my pawns? b7, e7, which one do I want to protect? Definitely, I want to protect my past pawns. And I'll typically do something like bishop g5, but I think I'm just going to start pushing. I know they have two rooks putting pressure on f7, but I don't think they could capitalize on it. If they go rook b7, that's fine. Uh, that pawn is not going to be a big deal. So let's see what happens. Okay, so now what if I try to simplify the rooks? Let's see. This is the only piece that they have given me a hard time. So if I could get rid of it, perfect. If they don't, if they just move, let's say here, yeah, they did that, of course. Well, let's see. Let's see if we can trade it. I definitely cannot give the pawn up. So maybe, oh, they trade it. And guys, if they had just moved away, well, I was going to start marching up my pawns. Maybe e4 first, hitting that knight, and then d5, d4. But the point is, there's not much they could do. True, they have two versus one. But that's nothing compared to what I have here. Now, look at this e4. It's a fork, but I'm not going to give it my bishop. So, hmm, let me just go back to, hmm. You know, I want to go back to b6, but bishop d2 is interesting, putting pressure on the b4 pawn. Eh, let me just go here. Let me keep it simple. Now, e4 is coming, e3, the pawn is going to be helping a lot. So, what's Maya going to do? Oof, well, this is just a fork. Very easy fork. Uh, guys, I don't think this engine is playing like a 1700. Absolutely not. Let's see how the 1900 goes. These two have been, well, yeah, the other two that we played, they were uh, 2000. So obviously they should be uh, a little bit harder. And this one is supposed to make more human-like mistakes. So most likely they just move the rook, we get the knight. Or maybe not. Oh, wait, it's my turn. So now I have to get the rook. And even if, it, if they get my bishop, I trade this pawn with a check. Then I take on b6. This should be a pretty easy end game to win. Okay, so in between move, followed by pawn takes. And there's no counterplay for the white pieces. There's nothing they could do. Okay, they're thinking, they're thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, Okay. so guys, pretty easy. Time to activate my rook. I'm not even going to start pushing the pawns. Let me get my rook over here. If I could get to pin the knight and then I would even consider trading my rook for the knight, this is going to be an easy endgame. Well, actually, let me see. I'm not trying to trade rook for knight yet. Uh, I don't think it's that necessary, but I definitely need to improve my rook. So let me see what's going to happen now. And let me calculate um, if they did. Well, that's a free knight. Oh, this is just too bad. Yeah, this is not. Guys, this is not 
definitely this Maya is not as difficult as the other engines. So let's see how the 1900 goes. And which one are you going to take? Okay, so I think I'm just going to start pushing pawns. This pawn is not going anywhere. I could get it with my rook. I'm going to even promote before that pawn. So this should be pretty easy. Let me just go g4. Push, push, push. By the way, guys, if you're playing in a tournament, don't get ahead of yourself. I mean, you can calculate this, but if you want to keep it safe, put the rook behind the pawn and you should be fine. No complications, no nothing. Okay. Now, if they push, I'm not even going to let them get the queen, especially since they're coming with a check. Yeah, so now I'm going to take care of it. No counterplay at all so let's see can see seven maybe yeah now i get my queen if they promote i'm just going to take it and we walk into queen and king checkmate you could promote another pawn this is actually something that we shouldn't be doing but it's good to reinforce reinforce it as well so let's see let's see Okay, so let's see if the third game, if the third Maya is way stronger. Let's see how it goes. Let's see if we can see the difference. All right, so let me just bring the king. Okay. All right, so I don't know. Well, I guess human-like, some people will actually take some time here to do this. But honestly, this should be already a resign. We shouldn't even finish uh, this game, but anyways, um, checkmate into moves. Yep, and now checkmate, or I mean, either here or on b8. So let's see. And checkmate. All right, guys, so let's do the last game again. I hope that the last one is better than this one. This one was actually, I don't know, it was pretty bad. Let me see. Okay, here we are with Maya 9. So this one is supposed to be. Let me see, yeah, almost 1900. So let me challenge, same time control, and I'm going to be the white pieces here. Now, should I play, try to do the same London idea, or maybe not? Well, let me just do the other opening that we have learned in this opening. So not F3, and ooh, if you're playing the, <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's see, yeah, they transposed. Now, notice that I was just going to do my fianchetto, but this pawn could attack my knight. Let me just go d3, and then I continue with bishop g2. And I castle. And then e4. If they just castle, I'm just going to do e4. And guys, this is pretty much the king's Indian attack setup that we learned in lesson number 79, I think. So from here, look. This c6, typically the idea is to do d5. So we have to know how to play against it. There's so many continuations that we could do here. You could do c3 as well. You could do knight b to d2. You could do knight c3. So many things. Now, I think I'm going to try to... I think I'm just going to do knight c3. It makes sense to me. I'm putting pressure on d5. The bishop is still open. Why not? Now, notice how... Um, Again, I could do d4. Just know that this is not the King's Indian attack. We're not going to implement the same ideas with h4. We're just playing chess now. I like d4. Uh, I like getting the bishop out to e3 or even to g5. But we know that if we do bishop e3, they could do knight g4. So let me insert h3, a move that you guys should be familiar with. Very quiet. Not a big deal. Now, if I were playing in a real tournament, and I'm playing someone way higher than my opponents before, I would consider playing something like this more solid, playing it, playing it quietly. But now I think I'm just going to go with moving the knight in order to do f4. Now, do I want to go knight h4? Yep. Sometimes the knight goes to e1 and we get the same thing. But this knight could even help me get to f5. Now, that's what they thought. That's why they did g6, but instead I wanted to do f4. Now, let me use that opportunity to place my bishop on h6. Guys, the moment they push pawns, 
weaknesses are created. So bishop a6, the bishop is not even in the fianchetto, so let's see. Okay, now f4 makes sense to me, and f5 is coming. Not that different than the game that we played against uh, Antonio in onchess.com, but let's see what we get here. Okay, so should we trade? or should we go back? Well, I'm not gonna waste any time. Now I'm going to continue with f5. And I don't know about you guys, but I feel very comfortable here. Same ideas from the king's Indian defense, pawn storm on the king's side when the center is fixed. All right, that one I was not. Well, we have to go back and we're hitting g5. All right, so look, I'm just going to go, hmm, I, I would like to go g4 and then h4, but yeah, yeah we have to do that. g4, and now we got to find a way to break with h4. So what's the way to do, what's the best way to do that? All right, so h4, this is going to be falling, maybe, and just maybe. <laughs> Well, what about king f2, rook h1? Well, let's do that. Let's open the h file. Notice how it's easier for my pieces, guys, to work on the king side. So my rook is already going to come over here, h4. Again, I have to solve the problem of this pawn uh, hanging. But let's see. You see, they need to strike the center. Otherwise, it's going to be very easy for me to do uh, what I want to do. So rook h1. Now, are they going to take? No, queen b6. Yeah, you see? When the center is not locked, they could do this kind of thing. So let me just bring my king over, solving the problem of g4. So now I could do h4. I'm not really in, uh, worried about them taking on b2. I could easily just move the knight. Okay, so, well, I'm not going to move the knight. I'm just going to go queen d2. And I could continue with my plan. If they take, I think I'm just going to take back. I should be fine. There's some ideas of also trapping the queen, but... Not right now. Okay, so time to move the knight. And more pieces coming to the king side. Okay, c5. Now, again, I could do a chip trick here and maybe a4 trying to trap that queen. Or I could just do h4 right away. Mm, well, let me leave this queen here outside of the game. I want this queen on the other side of the board so that my attack is even stronger on the king side. Now, they have to be careful. I have three pieces attacking g5. So they took. Now, what do we take with, guys? Take your time and think of what you do here. Knight takes, rook takes, or king takes. So, look at this. So, I have to take with the knight then. Let me see. If I take with the rook, they get my rook. Then queen h6. I don't think I have any checkmates. At least, at least it is not so clear. So let me think. Rook h4, we have to consider it. They take. Queen h6. And no, that's not going to be checkmate. So knight takes. And let's see if we can capitalize on the weaknesses that they have on the king side. Let's see. Okay, knight g5. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me take care of this queen, because <laughs> the queen is attacking my rook. Maybe it was a good idea to do a4, and maybe the queen will go back. Uh-oh, no, we trapped the queen. Yeah, this is definitely not, this is definitely not what we needed, guys. This is not good games. Yeah, now this is just very, very easy. Yeah, so, I mean, they took the poison pawn. This is something that a lot of you already knew. Okay, so now let me go back. I need to remove this knight if I want to continue to make progress, but also simplification now is going to be way easy. I mean, it's going to make the game way easier for me. So let me bring the rook. Now, not only if the knight moves, I could take on h6, but I'm threatening to do knight takes, rook takes, queen takes, since the pawn is pinned by the knight. I mean, by the rook. So take. Now, we're getting another piece. When the king moves, we could take the knight on f6. This is just um, too easy, guys. This is just too easy. Yep. 
only move to go back to F8. Now I'm taking a free knight, but I need to consider the checks. I need to consider all the things. Okay, so I'm gonna take. And I'm already thinking of rook f h7, trying to do checkmate. So why not? If I wanted to just simplify, I could have done rook h8. And that's it. But I think this is even more powerful. Yeah, only move. Now, guys, can you find checkmate in one move? Well, I think if, if you pause the video, you found it great. But I think queen d6 is just checkmate. All right, guys, I have to say this was way easier. This is not what I was expecting. Uh, way easier than lesson number, I think it was 94 and 95, but at least you got introduced to Maya. So if you didn't know this, uh, this engine, get to play it, see, uh, what you feel about it. Now, not to leave you hanging, I don't, I don't feel like this lesson was that good. We didn't have that opportunity to reinforce many of the ideas. Let me just play a quick game here on Lee Chess, just a three minute game, just to, to give you something else. So let me see how do I do this. Okay, so white pieces. Uh, I'm just gonna do, let's do e4. We're playing a 2301. Okay, so Sicilian defense. I didn't want to play the King's Indian attack, but if they play the Sicilian, I'm going to do it. So let me just continue with my Fianchero. Castle, if they do d5, I know I do my knight b2. Now, notice here, guys, how and we talked about this in our lesson on the on the king's indian attack the pawn is not they haven't defined if the pawn goes to d6 or d5 so rookie one is a move that goes regardless and now d6 the plan is c3 and d4 if they had done d5 knight b to d2 we talked about these two plans so let's see how it continues knight c6 nope uh okay d4 now he didn't take now look at this if i do d5 we get a specific pawn structure, closed center. We need to target the pawn in front of our most forward pawn. If I take, then it's a different story. Let me try this just to experience something else. And if they take with the pawn, bishop e3, developing, putting pressure on this weak pawn. Nope. Now I like this weak pawn, so it's a left behind pawn. So I think I'm going to play with that. Oof, wait, I left this weak so don't be surprised yeah mm. now i need to be careful with bishop a6 in the future but i need this guy out now why is he, is he thinking uh, maybe he doesn't like the idea of trading an active knight for a bishop that has not even developed and that is going to take a while to get out but truth is my dark squares are going to be weak, so well, let me try to capitalize on this. Oh no, forget about it. All right, so he's already pushed. I'm thinking of bishop f1. Okay, not a big deal. Mm, yeah, let me go back. Yeah, I knew bishop a6 was happening. No, mm, is that a free pawn? No, they gave my rook. So I need to do this. Now that knight is trying to enter d3 hmm. that knight is trying to get to d3 hmm, hmm, hmm. pawn takes well let me see if i can keep that pawn on d6 hmm, hmm, hmm. now i get to d4 hitting the pawn now what are you gonna do i'm blocking the bishop and I'm asking this guy, what is he gonna do? Yeah, he's coming in. And let's see if it's worth it. Now, I don't see an easy way for them to defend that pawn. So most likely, um, hmm. three pawn pawn f5 g4 yeah i'm gonna do f5 let's see now guys if the position is locked remember that it's better for our knights 
If I open the position, his bishops are going to get really uh, annoying, especially if this bishop gets into my territory. All right, so queen f3, trying to get to the pawn. Yeah, I knew he was not going to trade on d4. Now the question is, what are we going to do next? We both have one minute. There's no increment, so we have to start playing faster. Hitting the bishop, hitting the pawn. Okay. Oof, I missed a fork. But I'm going there anyways. Unless it goes bishop c8. Nope. Mm. Alright, this should be this should be a pretty interesting, pretty interesting endgame. Alright. Mm. Well, I think I'm just gonna take and I'm going to the seventh rank. Yep. Guys, checkmate on g7, I'm hitting the bishop, and rook c7 doesn't work because we could take the rook. So most likely they're going to resign. Yep, that's it. Alright, so we won that game. Guys, notice how the game started as well with a e4. And since they played the Sicilian, we have learned to play the King's Indian attack against the Sicilian. So g6, exactly what we learned in that lesson about the King's Indian attack. Then d4. Now, notice that I didn't play it perfectly. Um, I missed a fork. That knight came into my territory like uh, like it was nothing, but that's how that's how it goes. So, let me see. Rook c I wanted to control the weak square. Remember, that's exactly what the other knight came over. Protected by a pawn. And then the other knight followed the same path. But, this time I was prepared. Knight d4. I got my own strong knight. f4, I think put me back in the game, and then I took, and queen f3, we take another pawn, rook d1, queen c4, and now I was already happy with my knight on e6, I was up material, it doesn't really matter if my queen is traded. Now, he gave me the opportunity to open up the game, and with my knight on e6, remember, it's not so much about having a knight on the outpost, it's looking at the squares that you are controlling. So now when the queen went to d7, I'm definitely paying attention to those squares. All right, guys, so let me do one more game. Let's see new opponent. I think the lesson that this video is going to be pretty long, but who cares? Let's see, new opponent. Hopefully we get the black pieces now. Okay, so one is white, one is black, plus the Maya games. That should be pretty good, let's see. Okay. And if you think about it, we're getting a little bit of both, engine play and real games. I know you don't like this, Blitz because I don't get to explain so so much, but it is extra. So let's see. Bishop g4. Oof. Early push. You know, someone asked me about this exact variation not long ago. So here we could take or knight f to the seven. Now hmm, pawn takes, pawn takes. Knight f to the seven. I'm gonna take. That's why the pawn is on the six. Now, it's a different story if the bishop were in here because the queen is also putting pressure on d5. But here we should be fine. Okay, knight c6. Now, e5, the pawn that they pushed is now going to be concerning to them. So, let's see what they do. Bishop g4 is another way to undermine e5. Hmm. Is that a free... Mm, no, that's not a free pawn. So, take takes. Hmm. That's actually a very interesting move. Hmm. What should we do? Bishop e6. Then they have knight g5. Hmm. That's definitely an interesting move. Mm -mm -mm. Let me just do knight b6. I just don't want to take here, guys, because the bishop is going to get active. And I know I'm not going to be comfortable. Now, knight c4 could be coming, knight d4 could be coming. So let's see what they're going to do. Oop. All right, look, I got a bad pawn structure, but I get the pair of bishops in return, and I'm going to start using them. So he didn't want me to go here to keep putting pressure on e5, but now he's not going to castle to the king side, plus the queen side has already a semi-open file, thanks to my double pawn. So anyways, um, nope, I'm not trading queens. That king cannot castle. I need to keep my queens. I need to keep attacking so let's see if i can find a way to attack now rook b8 
taking advantage of what they gave me for that double pawn. So, whoop, wait, wait, what am I doing here? Yeah, wait, this. Oh, okay. Okay, so let me let me see. Mm, root b8 has to come over. Yeah. Now b3, guys, it's gonna make my bishop just the best piece. Now we're playing a 2256. So they definitely know what they're doing, but they need to be careful. What if we just open up the game even more? Now, if he takes, that's it. If the if file opens, that king cannot castle. And I'm going to have a clear line to attack it. So bishop a6, maybe. Nope. Now, uh, free pawn, not happy because it's a doubled pawn. Oh, he doesn't like my bishop. Ooh. And e6. Well, we gotta do it. There's no, there's no other way. Oof, e4 is coming. So guys, you see, there's so many things going on. Yeah, he saw e4. Mm, right, let me attack this knight. So knight e4 maybe, yep. Mm, yeah, let me try this. Now, knight f4, I, I really want to do this move, putting pressure on the king side where his king is. d3, e2, all of these things are in the air. Remember when he traded his light square bishop? Well, hmm. That light square bishop made his light squares weak. Now, I have a fork, but he also gets my queen. So, he moves, queen, gets my knight, take, take. Well, I'm going for it. Okay, is everything protected? Looks like it. But my I have the pair of bishops and I'm up a pawn and I'm just getting I'm just more active. Okay, a5. Now look at this. This is gonna be the best the best diagonal on the board. Okay, let me do this. Let me take advantage of that diagonal. Okay, anything I could do here. Yep, I'm going to take on f2 now. Okay, guys, 25 seconds. So let me see if we could do something about this. Not good, not good. Yeah, this, this was not even a good move. But what can we do about it? Okay, that's a check. And... Okay, two minor pieces for the rook. Anytime, my friend. Okay, bishop d5 needs to happen. Guys, this should be winning anytime, but ooh, even more now. Okay. Yeah, we're getting that rook now. Ooh, we're gonna win this with 13 seconds left. Yeah, we got this game. 13 seconds, but he cannot go anywhere. Ooh, what? Okay, so Okay, we get that we get that rook. So he's pinned. We're gonna get a rook for free. Ah oh, come on. Oh come on! That was <laughs> Alright guys, so well played by him. I didn't realize it was gonna be a stalemate. Alright guys, so again. I don't think the first few games were that uh, instructive. This one's maybe neither, but at least you have some material. Next lesson is going to be lesson number 99. We're going to cover something that we need to get out of the way before we get over lesson 100, because like I said before, after lesson 100, things are gonna get more serious. With that said, guys, let me know in the comments if you got anything out of this lesson. I wish the games had been more interesting, but anyways, I'm going to see you in lesson number 99 next week.